today on the comic book show, Animaniacs, the savage Eric Larson, and a satellite interview with Jim Valentino. Welcome to the comic book show, the biggest TV show about comics, your central authority for Cerebus, Superman, and the Silver Surfer. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Tony. And I'm Nikki. And this is show number 12. Well, let's take a look at today's super tune. A super tune is a tune about superheroes or heroic exploits. Today's tune is Animaniacs. And a picture of a big baboon. Hi. And three little tunes acting like goons. I'm Yakko. Oh, Wacko. And I'm Stu. A dog and a cat. Hot like a cat. And a big-headed rat. I'm a mouse, not a rat. You gotta love the Animaniacs. They're uh, just a crazy bunch of characters. Mindless fun. Uh, characters beating each other over the head with objects and running around like crazy. Ten times better than the Tiny Toons, which were a major disappointment. That is really the only thing bad about Animaniacs. It makes Tiny Toons look so not funny. The characters are great, the Warner Brothers, their sister Dot, the whole thing. It's one of the funniest cartoons I think ever made. I think one of the reasons the uh, tune works so well is that the animators finally decided to write stories about what they know, which is the Warner's lot, which apparently they spend a lot of time on because a lot of the stories take place on the Warner Brothers lot. Uh, the characters live in the in the water tower that's part of the uh, that's part of one of the features on the real Warner Brothers lot in Burbank. Let's rate today's tune Animaniacs on the Mighty Meter. The Mighty Meter rates things from one to five, five being mighty good and one being mighty lousy. I'm gonna give Animaniacs uh, give them a four. I'm gonna give Animaniacs a Sabu five. This week in comics I'm definitely gonna recommend Shade the Changing Man by Vertigo Comics. And I don't just recommend this comic because I used to go to college with the assistant editor, Shelley Roberg. No, no. Shade's really good. Uh, it's an adult book suggested for mature readers. It's not an adult book. When I say adult, it's not that it's got naked people and people cursing. It just deals with adult themes like abortion, uh, relationships, and stuff like that. It's a really good book. You should check it out. Um, really, I don't like Shade the Changing Man, but what? that's okay. That, that's another story for another show. Hellblazer crossover. But, uh, well, that's cool, but because of the Hellblazer half. Anyway, over at Dark Horse, check out the Grendel War Child trade paperback. This is the best Grendel story to date. Matt Wagner did a phenomenal job on it. The art, beautiful, everything is just perfect about that book. I enjoyed that series, too. Uh, the, the series really doesn't pick up to, like, the tenth issue, and then everything happens. Also, I want to recommend Cerebus. Cerebus is a book I read every single month when it comes out now. I got into Cerebus about, oh, 15 issues ago real complicated book but it has good art good dialogue great letter section and really interesting notes from uh, the president of the company and its creator Dave Sims. Cerebus really is a great book and if you just started reading it and you think the story's starting to get a little slow stick with it because it does get good. You should also read Amazing Spider-Man. This book has gone from being really bad storyline wise uh, since Maximum Carnage. It's picked up incredibly. Check it out. Amazing Spider-Man. I used to be the biggest Spider-Man fan, but I just got sick and tired of Marvel. They just kept burning me on it. They would pull out the rug, they would promise all this big, big things in Spider-Man, and then nothing. In case you missed it this week, I want to recommend, along with Cerebus, the Cerebus phone books. Yes, the uh, collected Cerebus comes out in these big phone books without the letter columns, just the stories, just the artwork, and uh, Cerebus is essentially one gigantic story. It's going to end at issue 300. It's up to 177, 176 right now. And the phone books are really great if you've never read Cerebus before. You should also track down, if you missed it, Legacy Number 1 from Majestic Comics. 
Not only did this book sport some of the most beautiful comic book artwork to date, it actually had a good, solid story, something that's very hard to find these days in most comic books. Eric Larson, creator of Savage Dragon, stopped by in Philadelphia. Nikki interviewed him. Here's the report. Hey, Eric, how are you? Hi, I'm fine. So tell me, what does 94 have in store for the Savage Dragon? Oh, brother, all sorts of things. Well, we kill him off, and then uh, we spend the whole year trying to figure out some way of reviving him. I don't know. <laughs> We're just going... I'm, I'm just having fun with the book. Uh, we had this character contest where, where uh, kids send in their, their character that they created, and that's going to be coming up in 94 because we actually picked the guy and we have to have him appear in an issue with the dragon, and that's, uh, that one's been a... Uh, generated a lot of mail, that's for sure. <laughs> we, we got like 20,000 submissions to this thing and just going through all the mail, but uh, that's, that's going to be in the 10th issue, and I got a lot of stuff in plan in store for the book and then in, in addition to that I've got I'm launching a new title called Freak Force that's going to be coming out in December and uh, it's being drawn by a young fellow named Victor Bridges and it's it's incredible looking stuff and it and it uses a lot of characters that are from the the Savage Dragon book and uh, they'll they'll be appearing in there and it and it's fun I like doing comic books what actually got you started in comic books in the first place? Uh, like most everybody else, I read a bazillion of them when I was a little kid, and, and that was about it. <laughs> Will we be seeing any Savage Dragon uh, toys or cartoons or anything like that? Um, usually people open their mouths a little bit too soon about some of this stuff. I mean, I've been talking to co the cartoon guys, I've been talking to the movie guys and the toy guys, but I don't really like to come out and say, well, there's going to be toys for a certain, a certain period when that's not an absolute for sure yet. So, yeah, there will, but uh, it may be a while. I don't know. Nobody's blown them. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like doing the Savage Dragon Turtles team up? Daddy. <laughs> no, it was <laughs> no, it was fun. Um, Michael Dooney was the, the guy who I worked with in the turtle stuff, and he and I have been pals for years, and I ended up working at Marvel, and he ended up working at Mirage, and we always wanted to do something together, and we could never had a venue to do that, and uh, finally, now that I was self-publishing, it was like, well, you know, let's do this turtles dragon thing and, and try that one out. And so it was, a, it was a blast, it, and it was real easy. They they were they were no trouble to work with at all, and uh, I think this stuff turned out okay. The, the Mirage part of the team up just came out this week, I think. Uh, what would you recommend to somebody trying to break into the industry as a writer or an artist? Uh, what, what depends on what uh, what they want to do and where they want to do it. Uh, if they wanted to get a job writing at Marvel Comics, I would suggest they get a job as an editor first. And because all the editors seem to be giving each other lots of work. Either that or learn how to draw. But, um, <laughs> a little slap there. I, no, no, I love those guys. Really, I do. Now, if the Savage Dragon was to run into Batman in a dark alley, who would win? Oh, the dragon, of course. And why the dragon? Because he's the tougher of the two dudes. <laughs> Astonishing adventure. The coolest heroes. The hottest heroines. And the most outrageous villains. In the universe. These ain't your daddy's comic books, fanboy. The DC Comics. Available at Marvel Comics in Princeton and New Brunswick. Phil Cole Enterprises. Yes, Phil Cole Enterprises. Have you bought some of their stuff yet? You should. Why? Because they make comic book preservation supplies, mylar snugs, acid-free backing boards, boxes, mylights for every age of comic books. Look, you don't have to be confused. Everything is color-coded. Just send away for their free catalog of preservation supplies. Fine comics. Okay, this is Chuck Dixon welcoming you back to the comic book show. In the industry news, the death of Superman will soon be a video game by Sunsoft. A representative from Sunsoft said that the game is still in development 
and won't be available until summer of 94. It will include Doomsday, of course, the big old bad villain that killed Superman, and the four Superman imposters. The game so far will only be made for the Super NES system. X-Men fans will be very happy to hear that Stephen Platt, artist of late Moon Knight fame, will be taking his pencils over to Cable. If you haven't seen Stephen's artwork, you might want to check it out. Some people like to think that Stephen has brought back to Marvel what Tom McFarland took with them when he left to start Image Comics. And if you're going to be in the Massachusetts area between now and January 29th, you might want to go check out the Words and Pictures Museum in Northampton. Till the 29th of January, the museum will be featuring a Jurassic art exhibit, which will have dinosaur art from all kinds of famous artists, including the infamous Mark Schultz of Cadillacs and Dinosaurs. For more information on the exhibit or the museum itself, call area code 413-586-8545. In crossover news, Defiant is having its first crossover in The Good Guys, number two. Glory, otherwise known as Mrs. J from Warriors of Plasm, will be meeting the seven Defiant contest winners in The Good Guys. Malibu is having its first crossover in Breakthrough. Yes, George Perez will be doing the pencils on this. Of course, George Perez is famous for doing all sorts of books with like a million characters in it, and his pencils are wonderful. And uh, the best thing about this also is Larry Niven, award-winning science fiction writer, helped polish the storyline. In Clinton crossover news, yes, President Clinton is appearing everywhere in comics these days. He was in uh, Jack Kirby's Secret City saga. He was in Superman, uh, Prime Number 6, and of course, his daily appearance on Animaniacs. Didn't we elect this guy to do something? In figure news, Dark Horse is releasing a 10-inch Colt Calf King Kong figure by uh, Ray Harryhausen, and it looks just great. And if you're not in the figures, figures are pretty big in comic books. Uh, they have figures for just about all the major comic book characters, uh, the movie monsters, aliens and Predator, and a lot of science fiction uh, spaceships. We were down at the Horizon booth during Comic Fest, uh, fine makers of these products, and here's what they had to say. All right, we're here with uh, Yoshi over at the uh, Horizon booth. Uh, Horizon makes a lot of really cool uh, figures and stuff. Uh, what other stuff does uh, Horizon do? Give us a whole rundown. Oh, okay. Um, first of all, that we make the comic character uh, vinyl kit. And the vinyl kit, first, first of all, I think we should be explaining the part, what the vinyl kit is. Uh, vinyl is it actually made of vinyl? Yes, it is vinyl. And it is a rather hard vinyl, so it doesn't collapse or, you know, melt uh, with a little bit of heat, it doesn't become really soft and uh, smash it. Right. So it's not like made out of like the same stuff that records right. are made out of. Exactly. Uh, anyway, uh, we do make the character licensed item. Uh, the Marvel comics, uh, you know, the characters are really good uh, selling items. And especially, please take a look at the Venom. Mm -hmm. This really is the, one of the best uh, selling items. And let's see, we have the DC, DC comic characters, and also major motion pictures such as Robocop, Batman, Terminator, Indiana Jones, Jurassic Park. But well, they don't come like this. Uh, you have to put them together and uh, paint, just like the plastic model kit. Mm -hmm. And it really depends on how good or how, you know, how good you can paint. All the sculptors, the professionals, uh, who works for the special effects uh, in the movie industry. Oh, really? Yes. Uh, Lucas Films or, or any of those guys? Films or Carolco, you know, oh, really? some of them work for Terminator. Oh. Um, MacGyver is another one that they work for. MacGyver works for you? Not the MacGyver. Oh, uh, okay. MacGyver. There is another character called MacGyver, <laughs> and there is I'm a movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Average kit about 40 to 45 dollars suggested retail. Some of the larger size, for example, those Jurassic Park, mm -hmm. uh, those are $65 each. And uh, how much would it cost to buy all the paints and all that accessories and that? Uh, if somebody wanted to get started. It depends. Maybe they might want to spend like a 20 to $25 for paint brushes and so on in order to make it. And also, I'd like to suggest you to take, if you're not a good painter or if you're uh, just starting up, I'd like to suggest you to take a look at this video. It teaches you a dry brush technique, a wash technique, detailing technique, and also even the airbrush. And it's 55 minutes long. And uh, the person who's narrating this video, whose name is Tom Gilliland, uh, he painted actually this Jurassic Park dinosaur right here. Hi, I'm Jim Valentino, and the Comic Book Show will be right back. For the best selection in mainstream and independent comics, visit the Comic Collection on Bustleton Avenue and Street Road in Feasterville. 
We have the largest back stock variety in the area. Reliable subscription service. Used in new compact discs and a full range of comic-related merchandise. Our courteous staff is available to answer all of your questions. Now it's time for a comic book show. First, I am so excited. We have with us now, live, via satellite from California, creator of Shadowhawk, Jim Valentino. Woo! Woo! Jim, how's it going? Can you hear me? Yeah, hi. How you doing, Tony? Hi, Nikki. How are you? Hi. What's the, what's the weather like out there, Jim? About uh, 7.15 in the morning. Uh-huh. Jim, uh, you sure you can hear us okay? Yeah. Uh, it's about 70 degrees or so. Something like that. Nice day. Great, great. Uh, Jim, why don't you give the people a little background on uh, how you got started in the comics? Well, we just uh, just released uh, Shadowhawk Volume 3, Number 2 which um, has a 16-page uh, insert of the U.S. Mail by Murphy Anderson and Mike Allred. Um, we we'll also have um, the pack coming up from Len Senecal and uh, Walter McDaniel. We have an Images of Shadowhawk storyline in the works by Mark Testera. And um, we have a trading card series, brand new trading card series coming out that features about 40 different artists and uh, it's going to feature a uh, super special chase card um, by Matt Groening called uh, Shadow Bart, which is going to be a lot of fun. Oh, I uh, understand there's a new groundbreaking piece of evidence about Shadowhawk uh, you're just about to reveal. Yeah, we're um, about to reveal the fact that um, he's HIV positive. Um, when I was looking around for motivation, what would really genuinely motivate someone put on a suit of armor, to take nosedives off of buildings, to get into fights with people that he's never met, to break someone's back as a reasonable solution to the crime problem. Um, these things are not normal behavior. Uh, what would push someone to do that? I, I think someone would have to snap. And um, the way he gets HIV and, and the fact that, that he becomes infected this is a guy who has lost all faith in the system of justice. And he realizes, I think, somewhere deep down that his solution is the right one. But he doesn't know what else to do. He's completely and totally frustrated and angry. And, and I think um, this is what's motivating him to be Shadowhawk. Um, he's a result of, of Batman. What makes Batman work? What makes Batman not work? Um, to me, what doesn't make Batman work is a big, giant, souped-up car. Uh, relationship with the police department, uh, kid sidekick, those kind of things just don't work. What makes Batman work is that he's a creature of the night. Um, if you see him, he's out to get you. You're in trouble. Um, that's basically what Shadowhawk is. Uh, the spine breaking comes from the Joker, basically. Um, Batman lets the Joker free time after time after time, knowing full well that the Joker's a homicidal maniac and he will kill again. In my opinion, Batman's not doing his job. I didn't want Shadowhawk to kill because I think that's just way too much. But what I wanted him to do was make it permanent. If you come across Shadowhawk, chances are good you're not walking away from it. And that was the motivation there. Again, asking a question, what makes sense? If these people really existed, would they slap the bad guy around, stick him in jail, knowing full well he's going to get out? I doubt it. I really doubt it. And that's what Shadowhawk's all about. Jim, will there be any more crossovers or uh, animation projects with Shadowhawk? Yeah, the fourth story arc, which is called The Monster Within, is um, all crossovers. It's six issues, and each issue has a different guest star. The theme there is if you had a disease like AIDS, I if you knew you were going to die, if your, if your time was finite, would you seek a cure? Shadowhawk lives in a world that is populated by super science, by super beings, by supernatural beings, by aliens, by sorcerers. If I were in Shadowhawk's shoes, I would seek all these people out. And that's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to seek them out. Um, so he's going to be dealing with people like Chapel, um, with the others, with Supreme, with um, the 1963 characters. Um, he's going to interact with all of them, and he's going to be searching for a cure from any possible point. Well, thanks for taking the time out to talk with us today, Jim. Thanks for having me. 
Jim Valentino. Woo woo! Yeah. Live via satellite. Yeah. Woo For the best selection in mainstream and independent comics, visit the Comic Collection on Bustleton Avenue and Street Road in Feasterville. We have the largest back stock variety in the area. Have you been injured by a superhero? Did your arch enemy permanently injure your spine, cornea, or groin region? If so, then contact the law firm of Lawson, Lawson & Gee. We specialize in superhero-related cases. My arch enemy was following me everywhere. Almost like he was stalking me. But thanks to Lawson, Lawson & Gee and the restraining order, you can come within 500 feet of me. My arch enemy was constantly deceiving me. I sued him for damages, and thanks to Lofman, Lofman, and Gee, I now own his homeworld and his woman. Whether you're an alien from another dimension or an underappreciated god from an alternate universe, let Lofman, Lofman, and Gee help you. Help yourself. This week's lucky letter comes from our Carlos Brown, who writes us, Dear TCBS, there are some rumors going around that a big-name superhero is going to die in the Marvel Universe. Tony's favorite universe. I have this strange feeling that it is Wolverine. Please tell me it isn't him. I've heard that the person that is going to die is going to die in a few months. I don't know if I can wait that long. Do you have any information about this? Well, our list is countless, infinite. But by the time this episode airs, they'll probably all be back to life anyway. But just for knowledge's sake, a member of X-Factor who is yet to be named will die. The Matt Murdock Daredevil will die. Darkhawk will possibly die. The Punisher will die. Who else? Oh, Beta Ray Bill from Thor. He's, he's going to croak, too. And, uh... Rumors of a uh, major Spider-Man character, maybe even Spider-Man himself. <laughs> yeah, right. Or Mary Jane, you know. <laughs> but she did quit smoking. But uh, anyway, the list is very, very countless. I mean, they're just killing off pretty much everybody. So what does our win for writing this? Era asked us for an X-Men number one, cover E. We don't have that, but we do have X-Men number one, covers A, B, C, and D, all signed by Chris Claremont. If you would like to win a stack of free comics, send your letter to TCBS Letters, P.O. Box 10035, Philadelphia, PA, 19108. Send us a letter, and if we use it, we'll send you something for free. And that's it this week for the comic book show. Tune in next week. We're going to have Batman, the animated series. Because it's Christmas with Batman. Ho, ho, ho. The man. The Batman. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bill Cole Enterprises is the exclusive supplier of comic book preservation supplies to the comic book show. Ask for their products by name. And remember, when you go to your local comic store, say you saw it on the comic book show. I was working at a health club. I was managing some health club one day, and I was uh, I was sketching. And I was looking at what I was doing. I thought, oh, that doesn't look too bad. And I was like, 